For this video, I'd like to look at solving linear equations with unknown coefficients. And so what this means is that we're gonna have these equations where we still just have one variable that we're gonna be solving for, y in this case, but now a lot of our coefficients are gonna be unknown or they're essentially gonna be letters as well. So like D and T here are just extra letters. They are unknown, but in essence, they're still just numbers. So we need to decide or we need to figure out a strategy for dealing with these equations and solving for the variable that we're looking for. So let's just jump in and try and start solving these and we'll kind of build a strategy as we go. So we need to solve this for Y. So 12Y plus D equals minus 19Y plus T. And since we need to solve it for Y, the first step is to get all the Y terms on one side. So my advice would be to put them on the side with more. It doesn't always matter, but if you put them on the side with more, you can avoid negative numbers for your coefficient a lot of the time. Not always, but most of the time you can. So to move the negative 19y over here, I wanna do the opposite of subtraction. I wanna do addition. So I'm going to add 19y on each side. And my sum here would be 31y plus d equals t. And at this point, I wanna get y by itself. And right now it has this plus d on the same side. So I can essentially move the D to the other side. And since we're adding D, I can subtract D on each side so that I get 31Y equals T minus D. And now to get Y by itself, I can just get rid of this multiplication by doing the opposite, I can divide. So I can divide everything by 31. And so 31 divided by 31 would just be one or just Y, one times Y is Y. And then I'll just rewrite this as t minus d over 31. Though if you want, you can actually divide the 31 into both of those. So you have t over 31 minus d over 31. So either way you wanna write it, um, this way is slightly more compact, which is why I like it better. But it is good habit to be able to know how to go back and forth between these two different ways of writing it. And just essentially recognizing that the 31 divides into both terms in this numerator. You can't just divide it into one, it has to go into both. But notice that the answer we got is not a number anymore. Like when we solved equations like 2x plus 3 equals 10, you know, subtract 3 on each side, divide by 2, you actually got a number. And with this number, you can plug it back in and you can check to see if it's actually true. With these, it's harder because we don't have specific values for D and T yet. Now, maybe at some point, depending on the situation, a value might be chosen, but for now, we wanna just leave it generally. So with these problems, don't expect to actually get specific answers. You should expect to get some kind of complicated expression with different variables. Okay, let's try another one. So this one, we're gonna be solving for X. And this one, you can already see, is a little bit more complicated. I'm going to rewrite it so that we have a times 5 minus x equals bx minus 8. And since we need to solve for x, right now it's inside this parentheses, so we're going to have to get it out of that. So in our general strategy, and I'll, I'll write it for the next problem, is that the first thing you want to do is get rid of parentheses by distribution. Okay, so if you see parentheses and you can get rid of them, do so. You get a times five, which is five a, and then a times x, which I'll just write as ax. And then we have equals bx minus eight. And now we wanna get all the x terms on the same side. So get rid of parentheses, group all the x terms or whatever variable you're solving for on the same side. And then the third step will be to get rid of everything else that's on the side with the X's and move it to the other side. So let's move it, it honestly doesn't matter at this point, but if you move it to the B times X side, you'll avoid negative numbers for now. And so instead of subtracting AX, I wanna do the opposite so that I can cancel it out. 
So I'm going to add a x's to each side and minus a x plus a x, that's just zero. So you get 5a is bx plus ax minus 8. And like I mentioned before, once you get the x's together, anything that's not an x term, you want to move to the other side. So we want to move this negative 8 or minus 8, and we'll do that with addition. So plus 8 on each side. And so let me work up here now. So you get 5a plus 8 equals bx plus ax. And here's where it gets a little tricky because we got to get x by itself, but right now we don't know what b and a are. So it's difficult to add those together. However, what we can do is essentially the reverse of the distributive property. In fact, it's called factoring. So we need to factor out the x from each of these terms. So let me just give you an idea of how this works and then we'll go back to it. So let's say I have 3 times 4 plus x. When you use the distributive property, you multiply. So let me write that out. So when you multiply this, you get 3 times 4, which is 12, and 3 times x, which is 3x. But in factoring, you do the reverse. You start with three, 12 plus 3 times x, and you essentially ask yourself, what is the biggest number that divides evenly into both of these? And since they both don't have an x, it can't be an x, but let's just look at their coefficients. 12 and 3 are each divisible by 3. So that is what we can factor out, we'd say. And then we just want to see what's left. So it'd be a 4 here and a plus x here. And because essentially, once you figure out what you can factor out, you're just dividing both of those terms by whatever that number is. So in this case, to check our work, we just redistribute and see if we get back what we started with, which we would. And let's think about another example. Let's say we had 7y plus ay. And we want to ask, what can we factor out of this? Well, you want to ask yourself, what number would divide evenly into both of those? Or what is the biggest number? And it can be a letter, too. It doesn't have to be a specific numerical value. And looking at the coefficients of 7 and a, they're not going to share anything in common because a is not a number. But they each share y in common. So y is what we can factor out. And so essentially, when we factor it out, we're just dividing each of these terms by y. And so here we'd be left with 7, and here we'd be left with a. And you can check this by redistributing and see if you get back what you start with. So y times 7 is 7y. And y times a is a y, and we would be adding. So now going back to our original problem, now that we understand factoring, once you get the x terms together and you can't combine them in any meaningful way because you don't know both coefficients, then we have to resort to factoring. And so let me just rewrite the left side. But on the right side, notice that they each share an x in common. So we can factor that out or essentially we're just dividing each of these terms by x. So here you'd be left with b, and here you'd be left with a. And again, redistribute to see if you get back what you started with, xb or bx plus a times x, ax. So it would work. When we redistribute, we do get back what we started with, so that's how you know you did the factoring correctly. And now we have x times some number. And now we're dealing with multiplication, and we can use division to cancel that out. Because think about this. We don't know what a and b are, but we know that they do represent numbers. So if like b was 2 and a was 3, then this would be very similar to having 5x right now. And then we would just divide by 5 to cancel that out. But in this case, since we don't know what b and a are, we just have to divide by b plus a. Because something divided by itself is always equal to 1. So this b plus a divided by b plus a, something divided by itself, if it was 8 over 8, it would always simplify to 1. So you just get 1x over here. So x, or 1x, is 5a plus 8 divided by b plus a. And that right there would be our final answer. 
And like I said with our previous question, it's definitely okay that you don't get a specific value. And that's because we don't know what A and B are yet.